Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for Northern Ag TV. I'm Coulter Brown. Well, one of the best things about this job is being able to talk with producers who are trying new things on their farm or ranch. Recently, I spoke with 2023 Montana Leopold Conservation Award winner Kurt Millimacki. He and his wife PJ are adopting a lot of regenerative practices on their operation and I asked Kurt what was the first thing they did as they started changing things on their ranch. For us it was switching from calving in February and March to May and June and eliminating hay from our cow-calf operation. And that led us into learning about how people were farming different and that kind of snowballed from there with cover crops and no-till and growing a diversity of crops and it just kind of all started with moving our calving from February to, to May and June. We've been able to use the cows to grow more grass which has allowed us to extend our grazing season and helped us to virtually eliminate the need for hay. Well, switching to some cattle industry economics, of course, feeder heifers are always at a discount to steers, of course, due to lower feeding performance and lighter slaughter weights. But the discount can tell us a lot about where we're at in heifer retention at the cow-calf level. Last week, heifers sold at an average discount of $32 a hundredweight, similar to last year. That heifer discount, though, has been tracking slightly narrower than average this year, indicating maybe a modest degree of heifer retention. In the last two weeks, though, the discount has widened, which could be a function of drought conditions, but doesn't suggest aggressive heifer retention as the fall run ramps up. Typically, though, we do see that spread between steers and heifers narrow as we get deeper into the fourth quarter. Well, there's some exciting things happening at the Montana Ag Experiment Stations across our state. Associate Director Darren Boss told me about one of the things they're really investing in is precision ag technology. We're super excited. We just hired three brand new faculty members in precision agriculture. One of that was a strategic investment from the legislature. We redesigned some maize appointments and we had a large endowment from Elizabeth and Whitney McMillan Endowed Chair. We hired Dr. Paul Nugent, who's a sensors and physics type of guy, engineer. So we're really excited about these three cohorts. We're going to hire one more in plant sciences and plant pathology to both help the education and the producer side. So we're super excited. Speaking of MSU, next week is going to be a big one on campus. It's the annual Celebrate Ag event that's been expanded from a weekend to a full week. Starts on Monday the 4th and there's a lot going on. Of course, the Ag Econ Outlook Conference, Ag Olympics, the Ag Tech Innovation Summit, a Young Ag Leaders Panel that yours truly gets to be a part of, a banquet and the Celebrate Ag Tailgate. Also, past Montana Grain Growers President Trig Cook will be honored with a 2024 Outstanding Ag Leader Award. And staying on the events calendar, coming up on November 1st, it's the Marias River Livestock Association's annual Prime Rib and Rib Tickler Dinner. It of course begins at 3 p.m. with the annual meeting that will feature Corey Falk of KW Insurance as a speaker as well as Dennis Hull of Agro Media and there will be updates from the FSA and Montana Stock Growers. The social begins at 5.30 and concludes with live music from Exit 53. Also, I'm looking forward to being back in my old stomping grounds of Glasgow for the New Trends in Ag Seminar. That'll be Tuesday, November 5th. A lot to cover there. Going to talk about weather and atmospheric science, herbicide resistance, rangeland weed management, succession planning, and the keynote speaker will be soil scientist Ray Archuleta. Then after that, we're taking the show on the road for the Wyoming Farm Bureau Annual Convention in Casper, November 6th through the 8th. Always a fun time, but there's a lot coming up here in November. It's going to keep us busy. Stay with us. We'll be back for the markets and talk about the recent cattle on feed report after this. From the beginning, we've worked closely with farmers. BNSF's ties to the agricultural community go back 175 years. Together, we've innovated to make the U.S. agriculture supply chain one of the most efficient and productive in the world. Our strong relationship powers BNSF still today and helps us move the nation like no one else can. At BNSF, we move the nation for you. Well, coming back for our markets here, Friday's trade in the cattle futures was very quiet, anticipating the cattle on feed report. The report was expected to be pretty friendly to the industry, but came in a touch more bearish than expected. Placements were forecast to be up, be down 4.5%, but with drought conditions moving some cattle early, the actual figure came in 2% below last year. Marketing's right where they were expected, up 2%, so total inventory just narrowly below a year ago. 
Cash fed cattle trade did break loose early last week, generally two to three dollars higher with live sales 189 to 192. Dress trade mostly 298, but some sales up to 302. In our local markets, three weight steers were through the roof in Dickinson, topping out at 463. The heavier four weights from 330 to 346, five to five and a half weight steers 315 to 330. At the Glasgow Stockyard, some of the best prices I've seen on bred cows this fall with AI'd Angus heifers bringing 3,000 and a quarter and a load of coming threes at 29.75. Lots of demand for lambs in Newell as they sold 10 to 20 higher, 70 pound lambs 195 to 205, 80 pounders 180 to 184, and the 90 pound lambs 161 to 174. And after not doing much of anything for four days, the wheat market tumbled lower Friday, pressured by the ongoing corn and soybean harvest, a stronger dollar, and falling equities last week. As we move deeper into the fourth quarter, the trade in the wheat market will center largely on weather overseas as well as export demand. Hopefully we can claw our way back higher. We closed the week down 12 to 15 cents in the wheat futures with December spring wheat at 605, winter wheat at 572. Well, thanks for starting your week here with Northern Ag TV. I'm Coulter Brown from the Northern Ag Network. Have a good one.